Welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you all so much for being with me. Remember, you can support the Father's State by going to thefatherstate.tv slash donate and also on locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. And thank you all in advance. And thank those who are already helping. I do appreciate it. I have with me Shaw Curry. Shaw's from the Safe What She Wants social media channel. She is a prophet, counselor, author, and call herself the number one female advocate for men. Y'all, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for having me, Jesse. It's an honor. Thank you. Right on. So you say that you are a prophet. What does that mean? So as far as a prophet is concerned, um, spiritually, I am a prophet. I know things, I see things, I hear things about people, and specifically, I operate out of words of knowledge. And when you say you hear things about people, you know things, are you hearing them from other people or from God? From God. From God. And can you give me an example of what you hear, if you can? Right. So specifically, a few years ago, um, about 10 years ago, actually, um, this gift came on me where I would know people's names. I would know people's names as far as who worked at their job, what uh, people that were in their family and things of that nature. I also, as far as traumas and dramas are concerned in people's lives, I can pinpoint like traumas that happened like in childhood. I'll say like, okay, this happened between the ages of six and 11. So things of that nature. Amazing. And so you became a number one female advocate for men. How did that happen? So it, it happened by me doing my own work, honestly, believe it or not. And the reason why I do what I do is because so many times us as women, I feel like we fail to dig out our stuff from childhood trauma or adolescent or either from previous partners. So we can have a good man right in front of our faces, but we look at him through a skewed lens. And so we end up pointing the finger at him instead of realizing like we need to take accountability for the stuff that we do and say ourselves. And so why is it so hard for women to take accountability for their own actions? I feel like a lot of the times because us as women, we're coddled. You know, we get that extra nurturing, that extra care when we're little. And also because society has put it out there. Society has, I feel like society has pit women over men in a lot of different ways, as far as careers, as far as status, as far as finances. Amazing. And so you're an advocate for men. And you advocate for what? So I advocate for the all for the overall man. I advocate specifically for their mental wellness as far as um, their emotions and what's important to them matters. Because I feel like so many times society puts it out there like men's feelings don't matter. What they go through uh, in day to day life doesn't matter. What they go through as far as mental health doesn't matter. And so it's I, I've, I've created this safe space. Um, where men feel very comfortable coming to my space and talking about things that matter to them. And and almost across the board, they're like, how do you know this? I'm like, well, first of all, I through experience, but honestly, like the, the stuff that I come up with, like my content and the videos I make, like literally God drops it into me. And then I, I just deliver the message. Like I'm I'm the messenger. I'm the one that said yes. And this is how it's spreading now. And so you counsel with men as well? I do. And so men come to you and they talk to you about any and everything? They do. Are you surprised that they tell you their personal stuff? I'm not surprised. I'm sorry? I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. And honestly, because like us as women, us as women, and, and I am, yes, the number one female advocate for men, but I'm also a sister to women because I want to see us do better. And so what happens with you guys is, uh, you guys have had very little safe spaces. Like we have magazines, we have talk shows, we have blogs, we have our mothers, sisters, aunties, cousins, brothers that we can go to and we won't get judged for the most part. But you guys, the minute you guys speak up for yourself or you bring something to the table that's important to you, you guys end up getting it smashed in your face so they'll use it against you. What happens is you'll be disregarded and belittled. They'll, they'll say you're weak. So, like, at the end of the day, you guys carry the wor- the weight of the world on your shoulders. So you guys have to have a safe space. You guys have to be able to verbalize what's going on. Because so many times, and you know this, I know that you know stats, Jesse, 
And so like 80 to 85 percent or even more uh, of suicides are by men. That has to stop. You guys carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. There's no way you should go out to be uh, have to stay relevant in the world, stay relevant in the workplace or, or your career or, or as an entrepreneur and then come home and fight your spouse. Absolutely not. So are you married? I'm not. Not You're not married? No. And I'm not currently, but I was married for almost 25 years. Really? And yes. were you difficult to deal with? Yes, I was. And, I, and listen, I'm, I'm, I take accountability for it because this is the thing. Um, and, and like I said, I wasn't able to do what I do until I actually started to look within myself. I was a mess. Yeah. I, I, I was very... I was very like boom, boom, boom with my mouth. Like as much as he was, um, let's just say he got physical. I, I was like with my mouth, I was, it, it was detrimental. And we were, and this is the thing. I'm never going to say anything bad about him because right. at the end of the day, we were two traumatic individuals that got together. And what were we supposed to create besides trauma and drama? We were chaotic. Yeah. We, we, we were traumatic individuals. You know, we were born into trauma. So you know, at, 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 and when we were married, it was like I always found myself pointing the finger at him when in reality, it was the fact that I needed to dig out my BS. Let's, can I say BS? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> Amazing. And so have you overcome <laughs> your BS? Absolutely. And yes. how did you and overcome it? And I had to learn it? a lot of that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, how did you overcome it? Because I started to look within myself instead of pointing the finger. I started to revisit times you know, from my childhood, that stuff that happened that shouldn't have happened, um, facing the fact that although, like, I didn't have the mother and father and, and nurturing that I wanted or needed, right. I still was able to reach back and say, you know what, that doesn't give me space and place to act out how I do now. I, ha I had to, I had to put my big girl panties on. I had to say, no, like, you can no longer act like this. If if you're going to be a woman of integrity and a woman of good character, you got to deal with your BS. You yeah. got to dig it out. So did you forgive your mother? I did. Uh, I did. And before she passed away, I was able to do that. Yeah, so about five, six years before she passed away, I was able to do that. So you went to her and forgave her? Yep. And, and I, I asked her to forgive me for everything that I had done and I had said. Absolutely. Uh, amazing. And how did you forgive your father for not protecting you from her? Yeah, and and I, and I did I did forgive my father, but my father passed when I was about seven years old. So, oh. um, it, it was a spiritual forgiving. Right. But I had to have that release, and that's the reason why. I, like, the more I forgave, the more freedom I felt like I got spiritually, and even how I move about in in real life. And so, are you a Christian? I used to be. A and now you're what? I'm 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 more like a free spirit, if you will. Um, I'm more spiritual than anything. I still believe in God. I just believe that God is in, in everything. God is omnipresent. So God is the universe to me. God is, you know, um, God is God. And, and, and what is spiritual? Spiritual, I, um, I'm very big on energy. I pick up on a lot when it comes to energy. So um, I, I understand that uh, my body is in human form, but I operate spiritually first. And so what do, what do men need? For themselves or from women? You, I can tell you what they, what, across what the board, they, what they need. To, what do they need to make their lives better? Um, to become stronger and to be able to deal with the issues of life? What do they need? They, they have, first and foremost, no matter what, you always have to look in the mirror. So they need to be uh, across the board. We need to be more self-aware um, as far as what I feel like they need from their spouse. And this is me talking to thousands of people and, and having two to five million views per week. Like this is like what they're saying on my page or what they're coming to me with uh, patience. They want kindness. They want, you know, like like married men and men that are in committed relationships. They're not even getting proper meals cooked. They're not even getting physical intimacy. Most of them. And, and 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 it's sad, but at the end of the day, um, uh, like I said, patience, uh, physical intimacy. They need someone to you know be there to um, listen to them, um, make sure that what's important to them is 
is important to their person as well. Because what happens is I feel like a lot of the time men will have things that, that are important to them emotionally. And what happens is it's thrown by the wayside or they're seen as weak for speaking up. And I don't feel like it should be that way. Amazing. And so um, is it normal for men to be emotional? I would say yes. I would say yes, because we're all, at the end of the day, I feel like we're all human beings. So I feel like absolutely men men have emotions. But I, I will say this. I feel like society has put it out there that, you know, um, and you guys know, like, uh, from little boy, you're taught to suck it up. You know, like, get up. You, you know, if you if you scrape a knee, it's like, get up. No, uh, uh, don't be crying. You know, and so you guys are taught to basically stuff your emotions down. But yet. On the flip side of that, as an adult, you're expected to be a proper citizen, a, a proper uh, conductive citizen of society. And then also you're expected to be this amazing spouse who is supposed to be who, who's supposed to have amazing communication skills. But yet you've been told to suck it up and that your feelings and your emotions don't matter. So which one is it? we got to have balance. Amazing. Um, I, I forgot to put it on here, but I, I was looking at your website. And you say mm -hmm. that some men have never been hugged or nurtured. And it's heartbreaking. Can you explain what that means exactly? Yes, absolutely. There are so many men, Jesse, that walk around. And I'm talking about they've been um, not only from, from did, did they not get it when they were um, children uh, because they were taught to, you know what I mean? Like suck it up, get up and, and move on. Um, but also from their spouses, I'm talking about 20, 30 and 40 year marriages where, where their spouses are not giving them like like uh, hugs and, and nurturing or encouragement and support. Like literally they're weathering the storm every single day. They have to provide, they have to protect, but yet their cup is 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 empty, but yet they still keep going. Right. Y'all strong. And, and, <laughs> and so. And so what do you tell men to do in that case that need a hug and emotions of support? What do you tell them to do? My first thing is communication. Like if they're in congruency with someone and, and they're, they feel like they're not getting that out of their person, like what they need, communication, communication, communication. After that, if you feel like you need to bring in a third party and your partner's okay with that, then I would do that. But it's, it's, it's so overlooked. It's so overlooked of the fact that you guys also want someone to act like they care about you. And physical touch is important to a lot of men. And when you say bring in a third person, what do you mean? I'm talking about like a counselor right. or, or oh, a okay. pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um, and so a man should say to his girlfriend or wife that I need you to I need you to nurture me. I need emotion. I need this or that. <laughs> Well, not, uh, not necessarily. <laughs> it felt so funny when you say it. Not necessarily <laughs> in those words per se, but yes, absolutely. And you know what I find also is that a lot of women carry so much trauma to where that's the reason why, that's the reason why they're not able to care for that man properly is because they also have their trauma. So like, like that, like I say, across the board, it's imperative that we all make sure that, you know, that we're doing our work per se. Make sure you look in the mirror first. Make sure that you're being the best you that you can be. But women hate men who need nurturing. Uh, some, who, some women who do. Who would tell some them women. that. Because women, they have a natural, unnatural need to look up, an unnatural, natural need to look up to men to bring them out of right. their hell. And so right. if the man let the woman know he's in hell with her, how would he help her and how would she respect him? I, I understand that, but I also look at it this way. If we're a team, then I should be able to come to you and you should be able to come to me. If we're a team, then there, there are certain burdens that we have to share. And one of those is emotional, in my opinion. Because this is the thing, like, if you can't go to the closest person to you on this earth, then who can you go to? So if a husband went to, or boyfriend went to his girlfriend, and said to her, I need emotional support right now. I need you to, I, I don't know how emotional support works, but mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. emotional support. What should the woman do? 
listen, listen, listen. Because that and that and that's another thing that happens is where, you know, um, a man can come to you and he can be passionate about something or he'll be, you know, he'll be so fed up that he's speaking with an elevated uh, voice or, or, or a certain tone that you may not like. But at the end of the day, you want him to come to you, don't you? Do you want him to go to somebody else? So as much as women want to have a rebuttal when men say what's on their mind, sometimes all they need to do is be quiet and listen. Most of the time, y'all don't even want no answer. You just need to get it out of here. You just need to get it out of get it out of you, you know, out of, out of you. So that way, you know, it's not festering inside. But so many times, women just don't listen. They. I I remember Oprah used to do her little show on. Uh when she was on local TV, she would have all these women mm -hmm. come into the auditorium there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they would say that men never listen. They're always trying to help. They're always trying to give me advice. I don't want them to give me advice. I need them to listen. So it sounds like you're saying that men want the same thing from women that women want from men. In some ways, in some ways. But also, um, I feel like so many times you guys have solutions, but yet the women don't they don't they don't respect what you come to them with. You can come to them with a solution, but yet it's like you're not heard. Amazing. And also you say that men are not that difficult. What do you mean by that? Because okay, listen, this and I broke it down. It's like y'all need some 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 quality time, some attentiveness, some physical intimacy, a meal, and some respect. It's not that I don't feel like it's that hard. Did I miss something? Because I, I I feel like for the most part, all across the board, like those are like the top five things that men need. Amazing. And do you work with all races of men or just black men? All races. All, all races. races. Yep. That's amazing. Are you surprised that men listen to you? I'm not. You're not. I'm not because I'm not because when I say that, like. God drops these gems into me, Jesse. It it just comes. Like I don't think about nothing. I record. I, I get the jewels. I get the gems. I get the phone and I record it and I and I post it. That's how it goes. I don't. There's nothing that's preconceived about it. It's supernatural the way it comes about. That's amazing. Um, do women have love to give? I know a lot of men try to get love from women. Do women have love to give? It, I feel like it depends on the emotional intelligence of the person because so many times, and even speaking for myself, so many times I thought I was given love, but it was, um, I feel like I was, hmm, I feel like I was giving love, but I feel like it wasn't unconditional. I feel like there was something uh, underlying, if you will, because of all the trauma that I had experienced. And so I, I feel like when the more you work on yourself, the more you're able to give love the pro in the in the proper manner. And what do you mean by proper? And from manner? the proper place. What, what do you mean by I that? Feel, so I feel like um, we can say that we love something or say that we love somebody, but yet where is it coming from? Is it because you feel like you're supposed to give that person love, or is it coming from the fact that you know that you need them in return? I feel like so many times there's, uh, and you know, you've heard this before, but it's like men get, uh, uh, women, women and children are the only ones that get unconditional love. Men get love based upon what they can give. Amazing. Um, I've noticed that women don't have love. They only have hate. You think so? Yeah. They don't have love to give. And why? Um, that's why when they do get married or dating or get married, they are looking to the man to bring them out of the hell that they live in because they only have hate and that emotions are hatred. It's not love, it's hate. It's not love. Why would a man try to get more hate from the woman if that's all she has to offer? I, I, I disagree. I don't feel like all... I don't feel like that's all that women have to offer is hate. I feel like depending on the caliber of woman and depending on the emotional level where she's at, I feel like she's, I feel like, and, and this is because listen, some people are in arrangements and they're not in marriages, honestly. 
because it's like it's convenient for them. It's convenient for me to be with you because we've been together for so long and I don't want to have to start over or I know that you're going to provide. So there can be a convenience there, too. But um, I feel like there are women that can give love. Absolutely. And where those women that you believe have love, where do they get the love from to give? Um, you know, that's, hmm, some grew up with it, you know, some grew up with it, some grew up getting it. And where did um, they get it from? Taught, maybe their grandparents, maybe their parents, um, maybe internally. And, and even like for myself, it's like, I, I never got the, the love and nurturing that I feel like I needed, right? As a kid. And so I had to teach myself how to love. I had to, I had, that's something I had to teach my, I had to teach myself to have compassion. I had to teach myself to have patience, not only for myself, but those around me. So I, I feel like I give love, Jesse. I don't, I don't feel like <laughs> I just walk around hating people. I love people, Jesse. <laughs> and you say some get it from grandparents. Where do other women get the love that they to give? Where do they get their love from? From parents. Um, I feel like, like I said, like for myself, I feel like I, that's something I had to build up with inside myself. I had to I had to come out of self-hatred first, though, because I, I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like the way I sounded. I, there was so many things about myself that I had grown to hate to where I had self-hatred. So the more and more I started to dig that stuff out and started to love myself, I was able to, you know, love more. Amazing. That's the reason why I got I got some tattoos. I got some hearts on me when yes. I was 18. I saw, and I got the hearts because <laughs> I said, you know, I always wanted the love. And so I wanted to be able to give back. Amazing. <laughs> Um, and so should a man ever listen to a woman? Absolutely. He should? You mean as far as following direction or like listen to her, like, you know, feel it. <laughs> <laughs> listen to her. Because y'all get that a lot. <laughs> right. Should a man ever listen to a woman, period? I would say yes. And why do you say yes to that? Because, um, you know, as far as listening, I, that's a two way street if you're in connection or relationship with someone. But then also, you know, certain times, you know, women do have wisdom that that can be beneficial, not only to yourself, but to both parties involved. But God said that every time the man listens to the woman, he suffers. That he will suffer. And I noticed over the years that every time a man has listened to a woman, he suffer. He always regret listening to her. And so God so? said that he's going to suffer when he listen to the woman. Why are you saying he should listen to her? So, you know what? I, what scripture is that, Jesse? Fill me in. In Genesis, he said, because you listen to the woman, you will suffer. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't, I don't know that I know that one. Remember so, when okay. Adam listened to Eve? Yes. And when, you know what? And when she, Listen, I, I know what mess that became. <laughs> yeah, and so ever since then, every time the man listens to the woman, including his own mother, he suffers. Okay, all right. Did you want me to ask? Did, did you want me to answer to that? Yeah. So if God says that the man suffers every time he listens to the woman, why should men listen to it, knowing that he's going to suffer? Okay, so do you feel okay? I don't know. I, I I I don't know. I'm I'm indifferent about that. Meaning that you disagree with God? Listen, I, I just feel like wisdom I feel like women also carry wisdom. I feel like women also have knowledge and, and, and experience. So I, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with that, you know, that every time a man listens to a woman he fails. I wouldn't agree with that. So you disagree with God? May if he maybe if he that's the way you're taking it. <laughs> <laughs> so you disagree with God on that? I do. Really? <laughs> that's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um do you believe in the order of God? Tell me what your definition of the order of God is. Do I want to hear it first. Oh, I see. You, do you know, do you know what the order of God is? I want to hear what you. I want. I want to hear what what you say it is. I know, but, because I feel like but, people have. You know. Do, okay, so do you mean like your, this? I want to hear what 
First of all, do you believe in the order of God? Since you're my guest first, and mm -hmm. what is the order? You believe in the order of God? So I'm going to say yes. And what is that order? God, man, woman. Right. God, family, Christ, and the woman. And so if the woman is beneath the man, the man is the head of the woman, why should he listen to her? Well, first of all, do you agree with that order? Um, in certain instances. But not all the this way? Is, this, this is my thing. I, I feel like, I feel like no matter what, women still have stuff to offer. I feel like women still have experience and knowledge and wisdom to offer. And also, even spiritually, sometimes women will have dreams or, or, or know things, and it will be beneficial. So that's my answer. And so, you know, the, or, as you said, the order of God is God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. But you don't agree with that all the way with God? You just agree with God on that one, too? Well, I, I listen, I'm, I'm sticking to it. I still feel like no matter what the order is, I feel like, so, wait, wait, wait. So <laughs> do you mean, <laughs> so do you mean to tell me that no matter what the, what wisdom or what knowledge the woman has to offer that it's supposed to be disregarded? Because I don't believe, I don't believe that. And I won't believe that. And so you disagree with that as well with God on that one too? I guess I'll have to disagree. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so are you surprised you're even disagreeing with God? I'm not. I'm not. Listen, as far as the way you're presenting it, I'm, I'm going to say I'm, I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to it. That the wisdom, knowledge, and experience of a woman can still be taken into consideration. But women don't have wisdom. They only have knowledge. And knowledge comes from their father, the devil. So women don't have wisdom, Jesse? No. At all? Right. No? Now, okay. Once, okay. once they uh, overcome the spirit of evil and return mm -hmm. to the father, then the father will work through them, but they must be born again of the father, and most women refuse to be born of the father. Oh, okay. So, okay. 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 I understand. What okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Amazing. So men, should men listen to women? Um, I'm still going to say yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> what is love? Amazing. What is love? Love is an action. It, meaning what? Meaning you display certain emotions, certain actions towards a person that shows them that you actually love them. Like what so, point is I, that I feel, I feel like it's an action. Like say they, you know, say that you know that they enjoy something. You know, you get that for them. Say they um, enjoy quality time, so you spend time with them. It, it's, I feel like it's an action. So I want to go back to uh, this. If a, if a woman is emotional and the husband, the wife is emo emotional and the husband is emotional, mm -hmm. how will the man help the woman out of her hell, and how will, how can, if it were possible, how can a woman help the man out of their hell if they're both in hell? Because emotions are, is hell. How can he help her out of her hell if he has the same nature she has? Ooh, that's good. That's good. So that goes back to your point of the woman has to listen to the man. Because I, f I feel like um, the man is able to dig himself out, right? But then he's also called to dig her out. Ooh, okay, I saw. I, I, okay, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and so, and so, a man should not be emotional, there, right? He should be strong and tough and wit and wise, so he can bring the the woman out of her hell. Why do you call it a hell? Because emotion is hell. When you're an emotional person, you're literally living in hell. So if someone shows emotion, then they're living in hell? Right. So if, so if a man or a woman show, okay, so if a woman shows that, like if she shows emotion as far as if she cries or, she's, or she gets angry and she yells, 
that's that's hell if yes. they cry. Right. So if I start crying, I'm in hell. Yes. <laughs> Okay, okay, Jesse, okay. I why, heard you. why else would you cry? <laughs> because, you know, something upsets you because you're emotional. Right, but if you were not in hell, nothing could upset you and you would not be emotional. Why does it have to be considered hell, though? What you, if it's just, this is part of your journey, you're going through the motions. And, and you know, on the other side of said crying, like, you, you come out better because you got you got it out of your system. But but you don't get it out of your system. You only get a thrill for a minute, a so-called good thrill. It's a thrill. <laughs> you get a good thrill for See? a moment, and then eventually that bad thrill will come back. You're angry, emotional again. You don't really get out of your hell because a good thrill is hell, and a bad thrill is hell. So you never over, you never get out of it until you overcome it. Okay. Okay. Do you agree with me that an emotional man has the nature of his mother? Hmm. I have seen that a lot. So I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree. And maybe not even their mother. Sometimes it's the fact that, you know, they were raised by somebody else. The grandmother so, or something. Yeah. He, but he has yes. the nature of the woman, right? From being in the womb. Absolutely. And, in, and the nature of the woman is evil. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so are you saying that all women are evil, Jesse? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Why would you say that? Because the gates of hell come through woman, the evil comes through the woman until she's so born. So everything again. good comes through a man, but everything evil comes through a woman? Yes. But but it, the good only comes through the man once he forgives his mother for recreating him and her image. And, and then forgive the father for not protecting him from the mother. And when okay. he forgive them, then God would take away the evil nature, which is the imagination and emotion. He would take away the, This is for women, too. He would take away the I'm evil nature something. of the mother and give him the, the righteous nature of the father, which is of God. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense? Okay. Yes. Amazing, okay. huh? Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> so an emotional man is a woman. So meaning that they have feminine energy, if you will? They have the mother's nature. He's acting like a woman. Yeah. Okay. Because, okay, so you don't believe that men are supposed to have, like men are supposed to have emotions or get emotional? No. Men are supposed to okay. be logical <clears throat> and wise. And okay. they're supposed to be in the world, but not affected by the world. Oh, okay, okay. So in the world, but not of it. Okay, I so got you. any man that emotional is a female. Okay. Do you agree okay. with that? I don't. You don't? No. Why not? Because I, I, I feel like everybody should be able to express their emotions freely. I, I don't, I don't believe that um, men's emotions should be put on the back burner. But we just agree that the emotion of the man is that of the woman, and, and, and her emotions are evil. They're from the devil. But I don't. <laughs> that's the thing, though. Why I don't. I still. I still don't agree with that. All of her emotions are evil. Like everything that comes from her is evil. I don't believe that. Can you give me an example of a good emotion? Um. Happiness, joy. What? Happiness, joy. What? Happiness, joy. Happiness, that, happiness yeah, is not, not a, a good emotion. That's a false. Why, Jesse? Because it's a false emotion and it only is temporary. And it's based on Does something. It... Okay. Okay. All right. Do you agree? No, we'll, we'll disagree on that. And now... A word from our sponsor. We love 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 Give me the shirt, come on, I ain't the children of the lot. Let's go. Come on, one shirt. Jesse! Jesse! What in the world going on out here?
out here. All these people are here for the merch, we were sold out. They were here for the merch? Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. The merch is amazing. How do you deal with your anger when it comes up? How do you deal with that? Um, I, I do yoga. Um, I do breathing exercises. Um, I think about whether it's important to me or not. Um, to be acting out in the anger or whether I can um, let it pass. Like, like for me, it's like I, I let it roll off me like water off a duck's back. Um, yes, I do get angry, but I don't stay in those spaces. But since anger is evil, why not overcome it, period? Right. No, but, but why don't okay, you so overcome it so you don't have to, it won't even be in your mind and body. Why right, not right. overcome it instead of doing yoga, because yoga doesn't make, it doesn't cause you to overcome it. Right. And, and so for me, it's like, I, this is the thing. I, I came out of anger. Like, I, I have over, over, I feel like I have overcome anger. But and because I used to be zero though, to 160. So you haven't overcome because you still get angry at times. But I don't stay there. Like, I used to be mad for days, Jesse. Now it's <laughs> like, it's like, okay, it happened. Okay, I'm moving on from it. Um, But it's not gone, though. It's still there. Do you believe you can overcome it completely? I do believe that. So why not overcome it completely? That I'll have to work on that. Amazing, huh? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> do you love white people? I do. And what's wrong with the blacks? I'm, 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 part, of, I'm part white myself. You are? I know you look kind of light skinned. <laughs> Your mother or father were white? Um, I had white on my mom's and my dad's side, on both sides. Right. So, what's wrong mm -hmm. with the blacks? Um, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with the blacks per se. I feel like there are certain individuals who have. Um, experienced certain things or who, ha who have learned certain things that have happened in history. And I feel like a lot of Blacks, if you will, play victim to what may have happened historically. But I don't feel like there's anything wrong with Black people, per se. I feel like some certain individuals, what happens is they get stuck in traumas and dramas and it's like they don't know how to overcome it. And so they end up acting out. But I feel like that's in all cultural backgrounds. But you say you feel like some of them are uh, uh, stuck, were uh, angry, or out of control because whatever you said about history. What is history that made them that way? What happened in so history? So you, you, you know, you know, certain people tend to lean on the crutch of slavery. You, you, you know that. You're, right. You know, you're very intelligent. Um, really. But I feel like so many times it's like you 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 have to get out of that mindset. That's that's a I feel like that's a mindset that people you gravitate towards something and cling on to it as a crutch. But in reality, we can all be great moving forward if we want to, if we choose to. I'm not stuck in that. So, I, you know, I I, I I didn't live back then. I'm not stuck in it. I don't blame people now for it. It, it happened and I moved on. I'm, you know. But it the is what people it is. that are stuck in slavery, they don't know anything about slavery. They were never enslaved. Slavery been over with a hundred years. That's why I said they learned about so. it. And so that's why I said. So mm -hmm. they're stuck in their head, in their imagination. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 also the fact that they learned certain things, or they may have watched documentaries or read certain books, and so it's like they saw that that happened. And so yes, absolutely, some of them are stuck. Absolutely. But and, we, but this, we have to want to come out of that. Yeah. Not every black person is stuck there mentally. Amazing. Have you ever met one that's not stuck there? Yes, absolutely. I love white people. I mean, I, I, I know. But you're other, white. You don't I count. I am part white. <laughs> you don't count. I'm part white, but I'm black too. <laughs> Which do you identify with, being black or being white? I I identify with being black and white. Oh, nice. Yes. That's amazing. I'm both. 
I'm both. <laughs> what do you think about the fact that white men, white people, but white men are the most hated species on this side of heaven? They're being blamed for everybody's weakness. What do you think about the fact that they're so hated? I've, I've never heard that. They are blamed for everything. They blame them with this phony idea of racism. They call white people white supremacists. They blame white people because they don't know how to pass a test. They can't, they don't, they, they want the Who white people that? to lower the standard for them. They want white people to give them affirmative action. Now they're begging for reparation. What do you think about that fact that they are blaming the white man for everything? When white people have nothing to do with their weakness at all. Who does that, Jesse? I'm Who sorry? Who does that? Who I'm, does that? You haven't heard them begging for reparations? I haven't heard nobody begging for reparations. You, you, you don't know there's a reparation movement out there? I, I've seen, I'm from California, so I've seen different pieces and bits here, but I, I don't watch TV, honestly. I, I, I'm not, I'm not up on that. I don't. I haven't had a TV in my room for about ten years. I don't. Well, you I better, don't you better pay attention because they're going to get reparation, <laughs> and you're going to miss out on your money. <laughs> Let, hold on, Jet, hold on. Let me type this up. <laughs> <laughs> you better pay attention because your your black half should get some of that money. <laughs> Do you agree Jesse, that? We listen. If I get any of this money, we go, I'm taking you to dinner, Jesse. Okay, I'm taking you and your family. We're going to dinner. <laughs> right on. Do you believe that um, if blacks were to stop hating, forgive their mothers, return to their fathers, and stop hating white people, that they'll be better off today? I feel like I do. I do feel like I, I agree with some of that. Um, I do feel like if those Black people that feel like they're stuck in that. I feel like if they would forgive their mother and father, I do feel like they they could become better. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And should because they be... we we can't keep on playing victim. Right. We're not victims. Nobody yeah. nobody's a victim. Yeah, nobody's a victim. It, your life is what you make of it. We yeah. are not victims. Amazing. Do you tell the blacks that? I do. And what do they say when you tell them that? You know, there's always going to be a mixed response, but I feel like that boils down to the psychological intelligence and emotional intelligence of a person. Because um, I could have stayed stuck there. I, I could I could have stayed stuck and, and and played the victim, and not even the fact that you know um, I'm black and, and other people aren't. But it's it, it boils down to us. It boils down to the individual wanting to change and do better. I can do I can do anything that I want to do. It doesn't matter what color I am. It doesn't matter what cultural background I come from. It's what I choose to do with myself in my life. What's that popping up in your background? Did you see that? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was angel from. That's a message from God. See, that was a message from God for sure. <laughs> uh, so let me ask. So explosions. Were women created to lead or to follow? To follow. Right. And so if they were created to follow, why would a man listen to the person that's following? Why I would a man listen to the I, woman I, I, that's being created? I don't disagree with you. Go ahead. Sorry. No. I was going to ask, why would a man listen to the woman she was created to follow him? So I understand. Why, I understand. And, you know, um, yeah, I, this is the thing I, I do. I do believe in and and I do uh, respect the fact that men are supposed to lead. But I this is my thing. I feel like women's um, thoughts and and ideas are supposed to be taken into account. It doesn't mean that they're always going to be utilized, but I feel like women still do have something to offer to bring to the table. Like what? Like wisdom, like knowledge. But like, they don't have you know, wisdom. They have knowledge what? because knowledge is evil. They have knowledge, but they have no wisdom. Okay, so a woman's knowledge, that can, that can be taken into account. I really no, feel like... No, because knowledge why? is from Satan. What, what scripture is that, that knowledge is from Satan? Remember when uh, 
Eve listen to the serpent and she would no longer, yes. right? And she would no yes. longer listen to her husband because the serpent had become her God. So she would no longer listen to her husband, right? Yes. Okay, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yes, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and then when the woman, when the man Adam listened to the woman, the woman became his God. He would no longer listen to his father, right? Whom he had a mm -hmm. good relationship with. Right. And so uh, Satan brings knowledge and God brings wisdom. And so if the man listens well, to the woman, he's only getting the knowledge of evil, but not the knowledge of good. Okay. All right, Jesse. That makes sense. I, I disagree, but okay, next. So you disagree <laughs> with God on that one too? And we're gonna, we're gonna disagree. So so okay, I have a question now do, because you do, mean to do tell you disagree me disagree with God on that one. Yes. Okay. Whoa. I, but you, <laughs> amazing. Amazing. <laughs> but so you don't think that anything a woman says is supposed to be taken into account at all? Ever? Yeah, yeah, you know, it, you know, women are closer to the ground, they're closer to, to hell than the man, right? And so women can detect hell in other people. And so if she detect hell and other people, and, and the man might not be paying attention to it, she should, it's okay to warn the man, you know what, mm -hmm. this woman got hell in her. Or that man has his mother nature, so he had hell in him. You better be careful. He should listen to that because women pick up on hell easier than men do since Satan is her God. Satan is her God. Okay, so... Unless she's born again. Right. Okay. Okay. And finding a woman that's born again is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yes. Yes. Very rare. Yeah. Very rare. Yes. So should a woman obey her husband? Absolutely. Do you work with women too? I do. And when you tell them they should obey their husband, what do they say about that? How do they react to that? Um, I don't think that I need to take into account everything he says. I don't think that he always has the best ideas. That's basically what we get most. And do you tell the, the man he need to get away from that one real fast because she, it, No, the, I don't. Listen, but the relationship. I, <laughs> That that's not my space or place. That's not my space or place. But, but that I, 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 what, I, what what I say is to maybe you need to rethink the the connection. That that those are my words. Maybe you need to rethink the connection. Right. Because, because if thing, she's if not going to obey, that relationship not going to work. And, and, and at the end of the day, then that means the connection and the relationship. Because that's the thing: the kingdom will fall. Yeah. Absolutely. So what I tell men when they're dating, uh -oh. on the very first date, mm -hmm. you go out, you're at dinner, you order the food, and while you're waiting for the food to come, your mm -hmm. first question should be to that woman, will you obey me? And if she's just at a at a first date, Justin. Let's say it, if we should get married, I don't plan to marry, but if we should get married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will you obey me? And if she say no, or him and her about it, he should say bye. Get up and just leave. He got get <laughs> They got to go. Right. <laughs> so you agree with that, right? Yes. I'm, I mean, yeah. Well, if that's the way you're putting it, you know, I, I, uh, the first date? Yeah. And they're going to do like, you know how they chat and wait for the meal, right? And the man yes. should ask her, you know what, if this thing should work out, and if we should get married, will you obey me? On the very if she first day. No, if she <laughs> just say, okay, bye, leave her and go. Just, just leave, leave her with the bill. Just don't, don't even worry about the food, huh? Just leave her sitting there. She has to take her Uber home. You agree with that? No. Why not? Like that, I don't even think that should be asked on the first day. Why not? You need to know because. what you're dealing with. 
Why waste your time? You need to know what you're what, dealing what with. What if they just? What if they? What if they're not looking to get married, Jesse? Not everybody that's dating is looking to get married. Right. See, that's, that's why I said, if we should get married, will you obey me? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Then, then listen. If that's one of his, if that's one of his regulations, and 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 she's not willing to agree with it, then absolutely, because you don't need to you don't need to further along the conversation or the discussion because. She already told you she's gonna be disobedient. She's gonna be hell to pay. <laughs> she's gonna give you hell. Yeah, absolutely. All what? of them emotions. All the time. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> so let me ask this, and then I gotta move on to some more stuff. We ran out of time here. Um, should women, should men be allowed to play in women's sports? No. And why not? Because they're men. Why, 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 men don't belong in women's sports. They belong in men's sports, playing against each other. It's, it should women be allowed to play in men's sports? Absolutely not. Amazing. You got a little sense. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I got to ask this. Are you going to vote for the Great White Hope? Uh, I'm undecided. I'm still, you know, I, I'm undecided. And do you know who the Great White Hope is? Yes, I do. Who is that? <laughs> That's Trump. Right on. That's amazing. <clears throat> what was your impression of the fallen Messiah, Barack Obama? Um... You know what? I, I, I and this and this is my honest opinion. I feel like um, when it comes to presidency and things of that nature, like the higher ups, I feel like um, they're the face, but they're being controlled by the background. You know, by their higher ups, and so um, I, I feel like he did what he could. I mean, it. You and, know, and that was, it was nothing. I, yeah, exactly. That was neither here nor there. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I don't have any praise just based on the fact that he was a black. No, I, I don't. I don't. I don't swing that way. Right on. And what's your impression of Big Mama Michelle Obama? I love Michelle. What? Yeah, I love Michelle. What? Yeah, she's smart. She's articulate. She's beautiful. Yeah. But she's Big Mama. Why you call her Big Mama? <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny, Daddy. Because when she was in the White House with the Father Messiah, she tried to make people feed their children dumb Certain food. things, but she wasn't following along with it. Right, she would pick it out on ribs and tamales. And hamburgers yeah. and everything. And, and have my kids eat lettuce, huh, Jesse? All right. But doesn't that remind you of Big Mama? Big Why? Because Big Mama would have her stacked and, and you couldn't have none? Right. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, oh, I got to ask this. Do you believe that racism exists? I believe that that's on the end of the receiver or perceiver, because I feel like so many times um, people can perceive something to be there that's not. Yeah. It's an illusion. It's not even real. Yeah. It's like I said, it, your life is what you make of it. Yeah. You, you can make anything of yourself in your life if you want to. Is Joe Biden... Good or bad for the black community? Um, he's right smack dead in the middle. <laughs> Do you support abortion? Mm, I support whatever the woman's choice is. So you think the woman has a choice to kill the baby? I believe that it's her choice. Absolutely. Why does she have the choice to kill the baby in the womb? Um, it's, 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 it boils down to her decision. It boils down to her decision 
but also whoever, you know, whoever she laid down with. I, I, I this is my, I feel like it's both of their decisions, honestly. So a woman even though she a... may be, even though she may be carrying the seed, I still feel like both parties, you know, did the deed. So I feel like both parties should have a say so in it. Uh, a woman has a right to choose to kill the baby in her womb. She also has a right to not lay down with him either. Right, but are you saying that the woman has a right to choose to kill the baby in the womb? I'm saying that. She has a choice. Everybody and, has decisions. Absolutely. And who I gave her it. the right to kill the baby in the womb? That, that's, that's, her, that's her body and her journey to make the decisions. How is it her not, body? Who, she... who, I don't know. Whoever made up the law and the rule to, to even <laughs> have abortion. That's who. And how is it her body? Did she create her body? Nope. But she's living in it. Did she it's create still her it? walk of life. It's her journey. She makes her own decisions. Did she create the body? Nope. And so did she create the baby that's in the body? No, because the seed was already with the man. So, so she didn't create the baby that's in the body. Right? He planted it. He planted it. And did she create the seed that came from the man that went in the body to make the baby? Absolutely not. So what gives her the right to kill the baby? Because she's still the one that would have to follow through and follow have the baby. What? That, that's my opinion. That, that's that's you said, my opinion. You say what now? She's still the one that would have to carry the baby and follow through. It's still her. The baby's still growing in her body. She's still the still the one that makes the decision. And since she had nothing to do with it, that because it's in the body, it gives her a right to choose to kill it. That's her decision. Absolutely. Does God agree with that? No. And so God disagrees. Do you agree with it? It's her decision. Do you agree with it? Do would would I kill my own baby? No, do you agree with the woman having the right to choose to kill the baby? Yes. But God doesn't agree with it. Why would you I, agree? I understand. I understand so that. So there's but you four things you don't agree with God. Was God wrong I about know. that? I know. I'm tally, we tallying them up and we're racking them up. <laughs> Amazing. One last thing, then I got to put you on the hot seat. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me that the worst thing that ever happened to the blacks other than abortion was the civil rights movement. No. I'm sorry? Nope. And why not? Because I feel like certain, like, like some individuals actually got something out of that. A lot so. of money. And, and control the other blacks, you're right. That's your opinion. I'm sorry? <laughs> so that's your opinion. If that's the way you perceive it, that's the, you know, but the, what, I'm not, I'm not good, here to change your mind. What, what <laughs> good did some people get from the civil rights movement, then, if not that? Right, so they got, they got to vote. What? That they got to, um, you know, have certain positions and jobs. They would right? not. They would not have been able to get jobs if not been for the civil rights movement. I feel like certain positions were um, unavailable to them. Absolutely. What, what was wrong with the blacks? They couldn't create their own job. They were doing it before the civil rights movement. What was wrong with them that they couldn't do it after the civil rights movement? Be because I feel like the whites had so much power. So much what? Power. So white people have a lot of power to control the blacks. Absolutely. Really? So that's why yes. the blacks call them white supremacy because they have power over them. I don't know why they call them that. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. But, I don't know. You tell me. But the blacks were creating their own jobs before the civil rights movement. Why didn't the white people control them then? I don't know. Like I said, I don't have all the answers. Amazing, huh? <laughs> So listen, I got to put you on the hot seat. Okay, we hot. We hot with it. <laughs> so I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Let's go. The hot seat. What is a man? A man is of the male species. 
Do we need more white babies? No. <laughs> Is our border under invasion? No. I'm sorry? No. Beyonce or, or Rihanna? Uh, Beyonce. True or false, abortion is worse than slavery. I agree. I'm sorry? I agree. Yes. Uh, uh, have you ever twerked? Never. No. <laughs> no, I'm not a twerker. Is the earth flat or round? It's round. Do you keep a bottle of hot sauce in your purse? No. Water. <laughs> Is it ever okay for a black man to love the Confederate flag? Yes, if he chooses to. Did Big Mama Michelle Obama eat up all the tamales? Yes. Does a chicken have lips? No. Is it ever okay to call a woman fat? No. Did, does it, did, did the bear shit in the woods? Hell yeah. <laughs> True or false? If you can ha, huh, you can hear. True. True. Did you have fun? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for taking on the hot seat. Tell the folks how to get to your website, your podcast, or whatever you're doing. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And you can find me at Says What She Wants all across social media at SaysWhatSheWants.com. And also you can find all of my books on Amazon. I have four books. They're all on Amazon. <laughs> Amazing. Thank What's you so that? much. It's been a pleasure. It was fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you for that. And thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, uh, subscribe, check out our merch, and donate to The Fallen State. We got some more good stuff coming up for you. Go to thefallenstate.tv slash donate and click the link on the description. Go to locals.com and donate there as well. I do appreciate it. Let me hear from you. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you again for being on today. I enjoyed that. Bye now. Amazing!